I was remembering when Srila Prabhupada came here. Srila Prabhupada did come here, you know, he came in Kuala Lumpur, 1971. Yeah, 1971, Prabhupada came here in Malaysia. He had gone to Singapore, but he didn't get admission in Singapore. Singapore didn't want Hare Krishna movement. But Prabhupada came here to Malaysia. Singapore and Malaysia, were, they were one country previously. It was all one country. It was only, uh, what, Second World War? Separate. Yeah. No, the 60s. 60s, was it? Yeah. Uh -huh. When Malaysia was originally a Br British colony, a colony of the British Empire, but then they gave independence to Malaysia, and so at that time they separated Malaysia and Singapore. Oh, so Prabhupada, I probably was saying that they got independence together and they remained together, but in course of time, a little while later, they decided they wanted to separate. Yeah. In Singapore, they have their own policies about what they want to do, you know, their, their emphasis on economic development and uh, how they wanted to run the country were different from Malaysia. So here in Malaysia, Prabhupada came and he came to Kuala Lumpur first and that time he said how he wanted to see a temple here in Malaysia. And he was, he met some of the Indian people who were residents here and he expressed his desire and he even spoke about how he wanted the temple. So Prabhupada came here to Kuala Lumpur, then he went to Ipoh. We're also going to go to Ipoh. You see Ipoh, it's only it's a two-hour drive away from here. And from Ipau, then, Ipo, Ipo, then he went to uh, a place called Telakintan. And then he went up to Penang, Bingcheng. So Prabhupada traveled, and in, in those days it was not easy, there were no highways. Nowadays they have very good highways to drive on, but in Prabhupada's time there were none of these big highways. And Prabhupada took the trouble to travel by car, he went to these different towns and the devotees arranged some kind of program for him. Uh, one thing which happened was when Prabhupada came here in Kuala Lumpur, he saw there was a Chinese body devotee, one of the brahmacharis was a Chinese body devotee. And Prabhupada said, train him up and send him to China for preaching. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the boy was actually a Singaporean. 
but a proper man here in Malaysia. But Prabhupada was expressing his desire to, you know, send them to China for preaching. So we're seeing gradually how Prabhupada's desire is being fulfilled with the Chinese devotees coming here. So the idea you come here and you get more training here and then you go back and preach there. And make and make many, many more devotees. Of course, China is a big country, there's so many people. You're just a very few people. So we still have a lot more preaching to do there in China. But it's the biggest market, the biggest market in the world is there in, there in China. So there's great potential for distributing the message of Lord Chaitanya. So here in Malaysia, the Chinese people make up 40% of the population. Even the Chinese here in Malaysia, they like to go to America, go to England, go to Australia. But in, in Malaysia, the business is pretty much run by Chinese people. Most of the businesses here in Malaysia are run by Chinese families. So they, they, they play an important part in the economy of Malaysia. Oh, so Prabhu tells me that out of the top 20 people in Malaysia, top 20, maybe 15 of the top 20 are Chinese. So, yeah, so the, the Chinese, because they're doing all the business, you know, all the, you see the cars and the motorbikes and all, all the big businesses, the, the, the hotels, it's, it's Chinese people running it. So they have a lot, a lot of power, a lot of influence. So it, it's nice that you're coming here and you can preach here also. There's a lot of preaching to be done here. We do have a few Chinese devotees, not very many. As we heard from uh, Kripa Sindhu Prabhu, when you had the meeting, they spoke about developing the preaching. That we've, we've worked a lot on the Indian people, we have to focus more on the Chinese people also now. So I think also our Chinese devotees, you know, you have we have a lot of ladies here. We would like to see more men. <laughs> Yeah, women, of course, women will attract women. It's much easier for women to a woman to relate to another woman. Mm, 
but we we do need to try to get bring more men into Krishna consciousness in China. People, people always ask me, are there no Chinese men devotees? <laughs> no, when you go to India, when they have parikrama, and they, they come to India, they see all the ladies, they say, are there no men there? <laughs> That's all the men are working to pay for the women to come the, the men make the money, money and the women spend the money. Right? <laughs> so, you spend the money for Krishna. So we hope you can uh, take advantage of this association here in Malaysia and become inspired for the preaching when you go back to China. We have so much service to be done there. Of course, you say, well, we're not legal, we cannot do anything. You know, when Prabhupada first met, when Prabhupada first came to the program where Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was speaking, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati immediately said to him, You're a nice young man. Why don't you spread the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And at that time, Srila Prabhupada was a follower of Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. So Srila Prabhupada said, no, our country, India, is not free. We're still under the British. The British are controlling our country. We have to get independence first. So, <coughs> Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati immediately responded, said, No, wrong, it's not right to think like that. You have to understand that the message of Lord Chaitanya cannot wait for some political adjustment. That in course of time, things will change, but we cannot just simply wait for that to happen. You have to spread the message of Lord Chaitanya now. Don't wait for the for some political change. If there is a fire in the building, then you want to warn the people about the danger. So even you don't speak the language of them, somehow you'll find a way to let them know that there's danger. You won't just think, oh, let them die, doesn't matter. We'll think how to save them. So the same way we see people in the material world, they're suffering without Krishna consciousness. So we have to feel compassion on them. Then we have to think how to save them. 
We have to think how to get them awaken, how to awaken them, give them Krishna consciousness. Or we could say, oh, it's, oh, we're not legal, oh, there's so many probes, so many obstacles. Oh, there are, there will always be obstacles. But the message of Lord Chaitanya is so important. So we, we do encourage all of you, please be enthusiastic. Don't just be enthusiastic here, but keep up your enthusiasm when you go back to China. We just had devotees come to Hong Kong. I was with the two groups of devotees there in Hong Kong. So devotees were coming there and they were appreciating Hong Kong. They were happy there in the temple, chanting and dancing and they engaging in devotional service. And they were thinking, you know, I don't really feel like going back. I'm very happy here. <laughs> but I told them that's not the idea. The idea is you, you go back with greater enthusiasm. No, the, the, your real business, your, your opportunity is there in China. It's the biggest market, biggest preaching field in the world. And you should think you're very fortunate to have that Chinese body. Which gives you a great facility to distribute Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.